Blessings and greetings. On July 10th, 1993, my wife Brenda and I were awakened at 2 a.m. with a phone call that every parent dreads. Our son Michael was in the trauma unit of a hospital in Minneapolis. We should come quickly. Michael had moved to Minneapolis with some college friends to try to make it in the punk rock scene, which was very popular there. He had been visiting a park with three others when they were set upon by a gang of about 12 young men. This phenomenon is called wilding, spurred on by alcohol and drugs and the party spirit. These young men just wanted to have fun by killing another human being. Michael's life was saved because someone turned him over so that he would not drown in his own blood. After a plane ride that seemed to never end, Brenda and I found Michael in a coma and kept a constant vigil by his side for several weeks. I had never prayed so much or so constantly. One of the worst days of our lives was the day that several doctors conferred with us to say that Michael would spend about six months in the hospital, two years in rehabilitation, and would regain only a portion of his faculties. He would perhaps have to be institutionalized. We wept for what seemed a waste of such a talented young life. But God was not done. He taught many valuable lessons, gave us many insights during this crucible of pain. These are not the subject of this video. The simple facts are that Michael began to improve far beyond the expectations of his caregivers. Because of the prayers of many, we could see him regaining health day by day. In two months, he was out of the hospital. The rehab went unbelievably well. Medical people never speak of full recovery when head injuries are involved. But within a year, Michael had made a full recovery. We went back to the hospital to visit many of the nurses who had cared for him, and they were simply amazed. Michael came home, finished college, went to work. He counts this whole incident and his conversion to Catholicism as two of God's wonderful gifts to him. His life is better now because of them. Why this story now? Because last Saturday, April 24th, our son Michael was married to a young lady named Alva Smith. The wedding was a reminder to me of God's faithfulness and blessings over the years. There were many friends there, some of whom I had not seen in years. The common link was Michael. People who had known him as a child, a student, a friend, a counselor, a co-worker, or a family member gathered together to celebrate this wonderful event with the friends and family of his new bride. As I looked over the crowd, I realized that most of these people did not know each other. But to me, they were representing a mosaic of our lives, people from different time periods who had been God's blessing to us at various times, all gathered together here for this one event. Sometimes we have a moment that raises us up from the vicissitudes of every day and allows us to glimpse for a moment the eventual triumph of light over darkness. It passes quickly and we return to the smallness of our temporal concerns. But last Saturday, I had a moment like that. Many blessings and God's peace.